Hey guys, Libby News here. So today I'm going to be doing my character bio analysis for the new Danganronpa 3 characters that were just released. And also I'll be reading the introduction and just kind of giving my opinion and speculation about that as well. Also before I start, I did want to mention that all the translations for the Despair Art character bios and the introductions were um, done as well. The Tumblr user Jinjo just did those and I'll put a link in the description if you want to see those. Also for the introduction for the future arc, I will be reading Jinjo's translation as well. I'll put a link in the description to her blog. She does a lot of cool translations for the community. so. Check it out if you'd like. Via the biggest worst incident in the history of mankind, super high school level Zetsubo has driven the former world to destruction. In order to save the despair-soaked world, the future foundation was formed. Nagi and his fellow 78th classmates, having defeated Junko Inoshima, have joined the Future Foundation. There, they are working to rebuild the world, but Nagi has been charged with the crime of treason for protecting the remnants of despair. Everyone gathered for Nagi's punishment has been trapped by Monokuma and thrust into the final killing game. Everyone is fitted with a strange bracelet that releases sleeping potion to a fixed time. While asleep, the traitor in their midst kills a Future Foundation member. To survive, they'll have to ferret out the traitor and stop the killing. The class trial rules do not apply in this killing game. Nagi and the others have been driven into a desperate kill or be killed situation. The tale of hope and despair that kills hope begins now. So right off the bat from this we see a couple of different theories and things that people have been like thinking about based off of the information we had before. That is confirmed and I guess what I'm talking about in this is the bracelets theory which a lot of you guys pointed out to me and I saw it on Tumblr and I never really got around to making like a specific video about it but I did talk about it in the um, despair cast with the Vol ones not that long ago. And um, it is kind of cool to see that um, the bracelets thing is confirmed and that they are going to be a part of a killing game, which is sort of another thing that a lot of us were wondering. From the trailer, it mentioned a new type of killing game and we didn't know if that was another of the same killing game or if it was going to be a different type of killing game or if it was just sort of like a metaphor for um, just the Future Foundation trying to hunt down Nagi. But it's cool to see that it's finally confirmed that this is going to be another killing game, but not the same type of killing game as Danganronpa 1 or 2. So next, I'm going to be moving into the character biographies, and these translations were a collaborate work by Jinjo Jess, Tai Chin Chin, and Manly Rampa. I will be leaving links to all their blogs in the description if you guys want to check that out and to the original post. But without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so to start this off, I'm going to start with Kazuo Tengen, and um, his voice actor is Hidekatsu Shibata, and his position is the head of the Future Foundation and the First Branch. He's the former headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy. His character report says, Once Hope's Peak Academy's school principal, Tengen is now assigned as a leader of the Future Foundation and a member of the First Branch. He scouted Nagi and his group as well as discovered the remnants of despair. He laments on exterminating any despair and aims for a peaceful world without conflict. Now there's two main theories I've really seen for Tengen's character and I sort of go back and forth on both of them. According to the character report, he seems like he would be a sort of like idealistic um, kind of person just looking to create the good in the world and trying to make the world a better place and get rid of all this despair and misery that it's been filled with. But um, the second um, sort of theory I've seen is that um, people have sort of speculated if he had any sort of relation to the steering committee at Hope's Peak Academy um, before he retired. And if you guys don't know who the steering committee is, they are the group that came up with the reserve course student section and attempted to cover up the tragedy of Hope Speak Academy. They're very much into um, protecting Izuru Kamakura, and we all know how that is. So basically, they were sketchy as fuck. And if I remember correctly, they were not very fond of Tengen's successor, Jin Kirigiri, as well. I would have to go back and read on Rapa Zero to really um, sort of give my full opinion on this. I think there's a possibility, but there isn't really any proof of him being related to the steering committee unless they like mention how much they love the past headmaster or something along those lines. But um, from first impressions of the uh, character report, it would seem like he has good intentions, but there is definitely a side to him that could be potentially sketchy. Another reason I'm not so sure that he would have any relation to the steering committee is because in Danganronpa Zero, Kyoko did a lot of investigation on the steering committee, and if she knew that he was related to it at all, I do not think she would have been very fond of joining the Future Foundation. 
Next on the list is Kiyosuke Munakata or <laughs> Yu Narakami. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, his voice actor is Toshiyuki Morikawa and his position is the vice head of the Future Foundation, head of the second branch. He is a member of Hope Speak Academy's 74th class and the former Super High School level class president. His character report says, the former Super High School level class president who once overflowed with charisma, acting as both the vice head of the Future Foundation and head of the second branch. He holds the real power. He has a cold personality and carries the most anger towards super high school level despair, hating it immensely. So um, just based off of first impressions from him, I do think he will be like a very big anti-hero or sort of big rival to Nagi in that group. And I guess I'll discuss that a little bit more. I think there's a good chance the groups might sort of split up during the game. And I think he would sort of be leading this future foundation, you know, anti Nagi group and um, the other side would be more supporters of Nagi and stuff like that. But um, I'll kind of continue on that theory a little bit later too. Also something else that is really interesting is I don't know if you guys have seen the new Despair cast episode with Valens and Tai Chin Chin, but in that um, they mentioned that the original translation for Kiyosuke Munakata's super high school level talent is the super high school level student council president, which is the same talent as Soshun Murasame, who is from the 77th class. He was mentioned in Danganronpa Zero, and he was the only other survivor of the first killing game at Hope's Peak Academy. I'm not really sure what sort of relation this would be to um, each other's characters, but it is sort of interesting. It made me think about, um, this is really the first time we've ever seen two different characters have the same talent, so I did kind of always wonder if they would just switch out talents over a period of time. I guess after they graduate, they would allow a new super high school level president or a super high school level musician or whatever kind of come into place. But anyways, I thought that was just something I would mention, and if you guys want to check out the new Despaircast episode, I will leave a link in the description for that as well. Next on the list is Koichi Kizakura, and his voice actor is Kaiji Fujiwara. He is the head of the third branch in the former scout for Hope Speak Academy. His character report says, acted as a scout during his time at Hope Speak Academy and now works as the head of the Future Foundation's third branch. Along with Tengen, he scouted Nagi and the others to join the Future Foundation. He appears whimsical and careless, but he has a sharp intuition and he is reliable when the chips are down. I've seen more speculation on Tengen being kind of a sketchy character versus Koichi, and I find it sort of strange because I think Koichi is a bit more sketchy to me because Tengen is um, already sort of, you know, confirmed to be retired when all the sort of craziness starts going on with Hope Speak Academy, but I think Koichi would have a lot more likelihood of being related to the steering committee, especially since he was sort of like a scout for Hope Speak Academy. I feel like he would have some sort of say in the reserve course student thing, or if he would at least know about it. But he did scout out Nike and the others, so maybe he's a good guy? Who knows? So next on the list is Seiko Kimura. Her voice actress is Saki Fujita. She's the head of the fourth branch in from Hope's Peak Academy's 76th class. She's the former super high school level apothecary. Her character report says that she has a reserved personality and speaks in a stilted fashion. She always wears a mask and since no one can read her expression, no one knows what she's thinking. So there's not really a whole lot to say about her other than her character design is really, really cool. But um, other than that, she is in the same class as Sonosuke and Ando. And I thought that was kind of interesting. It'll be kind of cool to see how much she interacts with them or what her relationship to them is. And um, I don't really see her necessarily being a character that lives till the end, unfortunately, but she does seem really cool and really interesting. I'll be um, excited to see what kind of personality she has. Next on the list is Chika Yugazome, and her voice actress is Mai Nakahara, and she's the head of the fifth branch. She's from Hope Speak Academy 74th class and the former super high school level maid. Her character report says because she works hard and is brave, she has a likable person personality. Though she has an airheaded side to her, she often relaxes the uptight atmosphere of the foundation. And if it's for the sake of her classmate Munakata, she doesn't think of her life as regrettable. Something I do want to point out about this is that the Twitter user Kamun Kutino also said that her last line could be translated as, is willing to sacrifice her own life for Munakata's sake. So I would definitely say there is some sort of, um, possibly one-sided love in uh, Chisa and Munakata's sort of relationship. Um, I just kind of say that because it doesn't really seem like he's a very lovey-dovey type. He seems to be more obsessed with hope and creating hope and hating the despairs while she seems very obsessed with him just based off of these character reports. Maybe he does love her back, but it still seems very much like she loves him a lot more. 
Something that's interesting is that her, Minukata, and Juzo make a trio similar to Hajime, Chiaki, Kamaida, Nagi, Kirigiri, and Tagami. She seems pretty reckless to me as well because of her um, sort of like unrequited love or her obsessive love for Munakata. I feel like she will definitely be sort of like an adversary against Nagi in the games, especially since I do believe that him and Munakata will not be seeing eye to eye, at least at first. Maybe they can sort of come together because of their love for hope towards the end, but I definitely think they're gonna butt heads a pretty good bit at the beginning. Next is Juzo Sakakura. His voice actor is Junichi Suabe and he's the head of the 6th branch. He's from Hope Speak Academy 74th class and is the former super high school level boxer. His character report says, working as the head of the 6th branch and former super high school level boxer, Munakata's right hand man, he'll dirty his hands without regret if it helps him create the ideal foundation he aims for. His personality is rough and he has a lot of pride. So the sort of vibe I get from him is definitely like a Mondo kind of feel. He definitely does seem like he's going to be a pretty tough character in that. He will be doing a lot of the dirty work for um, Munakata, especially if um, Munakata and Nagi are sort of like butting heads. I do sort of wonder if he will have a soft side to him like um, Mondo did. So I'm interested in seeing that, but there's not really a whole lot to say about his character other than um, those things. Next is Mia Gekugahara. She is the head of the seventh branch and is the former super high school level therapist. First I just want to say I'm so happy that we finally found out who the therapist was. I knew it had to be one of them. I originally really thought it was Ryota but um, nonetheless I'm really really happy we finally found out who it is. Um, first I'm going to read her character report but then um, I'll talk a little bit more I guess about my theories and stuff about her. Her character report says former super high school level therapist now head of the seventh branch one of the people responsible responsible for the creation of the HOPE Rehabilitation Program, or the Neo World Program, to rehabilitate the remnants of despair. Thanks to her extreme shyness, she does not talk. No one knows what class she was in at HOPE Speak Academy. So, um, obviously she is a very, very mysterious character. She has no voice actor or um, voice actress listed, and nobody knows what class she was in at HOPE Speak Academy. So obviously, those are both sort of sketchy. Um, of course, the voice actress thing, it does sort of raise the question on um, why would they not reveal her voice actress. Of course, she doesn't talk, but I would assume that she says some lines eventually in the anime. So um, the first thing that came to mind was that we might recognize the voice actress, like it might be a similar voice actress if she was related to Monica. I know a lot of people have said that they believe that she could be Monica in disguise, and I'm sort of still a little apprehensive of the theory just because she does seem to be a lot taller than Monica, and I sort of thought it was implied at the end of another episode that Monica's legs were crushed, but I guess there is a chance that she could have gotten them fixed somehow. But it would kind of make sense if Monica was sort of like hidden among the group instead of being the headmaster because we did get that um, sort of teaser at the end of another episode. But um, from that, I guess it kind of would be too obvious for Monica to be the um, headmaster in this game. So it's all just sort of theories. I'm still kind of apprehensive, but I definitely do see the bright sides of it. I guess we'll just have to find out, but that definitely is sort of interesting. As for her not being in a class, um, if she's not Monica, I would sort of speculate that she is in the 75th class because it's the only class that none of the other characters are in. and. Even if she doesn't talk, I mean, they would know if they were in a class with her. So that was the only class that really made sense. Otherwise, um, I guess it could be Monica or AI Junko controlling a new robot or something and they made up a class. I have no idea. She's a super sketchy, mysterious character, but I'm really excited to see um, what happens with her. Next on the list is Ruka Ando, and her voice actress is Inori Manase, and she is the head of the 8th branch. She is from Hope Speak Academy 76 class and is the former super high school level confectionist. And of course, if you guys don't know what that means, she makes candy. So her character report says that she is the former super high school level candy maker and is the current leader of the 8th branch. She is able to turn her head very quickly. She is skilled in negotiations thanks to luring people in with candy. Her candy is said to be addictive on the same level as narcotics, and she hates being backstabbed. So um, the first thing that came to mind was that she puts cocaine in her candy. <laughs> but um, other than that, I think she will definitely sort of be a character that's sort of sweet um, on the outside, but definitely has a very feisty side. And it does seem like um, where how it says she's skilled in negotiations that she could also be sort of manipulative in a way. Not necessarily that she's a bad person, but that she's very charismatic and is able to sort of talk people into doing things. But um, with the feisty side, I do sort of see that being not um, as extreme as Celise, but definitely sort of being sweet one moment, but then sort of turning <laughs> very quickly in the next. 
But um, other than that, there's not really too much to say about her as of right now, but I probably will talk about her when I go over Sonosuke's character as well. Next on the list is Sonosuke Izuyoi, and his voice actor is Takuya Iguchi. He is the head of the Ninth Branch, and he's from Hope Speak Academy 76 class. He's the former super high school level blacksmith. His character report says that he is skilled in weapons development, and he stocks all kinds of hidden weapons inside his coat. He is the silent type, and aside from Andoraruka, he does not interact with anyone. First, I want to talk about the fact that he is into weapon development, because this made me think that maybe he sort of worked with um, Mieya to create the megaphone hacking gun from um, another episode since she seems skilled with sort of like techie stuff and he seems skilled with weapon sort of things and um, the sort of hacking gun is pretty techie and she did help with the Neo World program so I feel like she would be really knowledgeable about that and then of course he would be really knowledgeable about the weapon side so it would kind of make sense if they came together to work and create that. Other than that, um, his connection with um, Ando is sort of interesting because um, maybe it's a love connection. I don't really see them being like a couple, but I do see maybe like harbored feelings or um, something along those lines. I feel like he's probably one of those characters that says like three words every episode, <laughs> honestly. He sort of gives me that vibe, but um, I guess we'll just have to sort of wait and see. And of course him, Seiko, and Ando do make another trio, which is sort of interesting because we have a trio from the 70th sixth class and then another trio from the 74th. Next up is Ryota Mishirai and he is definitely the most complicated character on this list. His voice actor is Kanata Hongo and he is the head of the 10th branch. He is from Hope Speak Academy 77th class and is the former super high school level animator. His character report says that leader of the 10th branch known as the super high school level animator when in school, he was later scouted by Tengen. He has a timid personality but a strong sense of justice and he wants to fill the world with hope. As a result, he worries about many things. So of course we know that the ultimate imposter is disguised as him in the despair arc and he's in the same class as the imposter and the other Super Danganronpa 2 characters as well which is pretty interesting because it seems like a majority of that class did fall into despair with the exception of Ryota and um, Soshun and Matsuda but it does sort of make me um, wonder where he was or if he was around them. I'm sort of guessing that maybe he was working for like an anime company or something that sort of kept him away from the class because it would seem that the imposter is disguised as Tagami as the first year because that's before Tagami attended Hope's Academy, but once Tagami did, he decided to switch to Ryota, so I'm guessing that Ryota was not present for the first year or that he was um, sort of working for like an anime studio or something along those lines. It does sort of look like he works very, very heavy hours, so maybe he's a terribly paid intern. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He was probably, you know, a very prestigious animator since he's a super high school level, but um, that's the um, only thing I can really come up with as of why he wouldn't have fallen into despair and why um, the imposter would be dressed like him. It does sort of make me wonder what the um, other members of the 77th class must have thought when the real Tagami came into school at Hope Speak Academy. Like, did they just never see him? Or if they did see him, were they like, whoa, <laughs> we thought you were in our class and, you know, bigger and nicer. <laughs> I don't know, it's just something sort of funny to think about. Also, in his character report, it says he wants to fill the world with hope, and <laughs> who does that sound like? But other than that, um, one other sort of interesting sort of trivia note is that the voice actor who plays Ryota Mitarai is also the person who is playing Makoto Naigi in the Dangrapa stage play. Don't really know if there's any sort of connection there, but it is kind of interesting, especially because the guy who's playing Nagi does not really do any voice work at all. So um, just a sort of tidbit of information. But um, as for my sort of personal opinion, I don't really know if he's suspicious or not, but he definitely is um, a character with the most mystery around him, and it makes him really interesting to me. I'm really excited to sort of see what his personality is going to be. He's definitely one of the most interesting characters to me so far, just because there is so much mystery around him, and I'm really excited to see what he does in the new anime. The next character is Daisaku Bandai, and his voice actress actually is Rai Kukumiya, and I will talk about that a little bit more in just a second but he is the head of the 11th branch and from Hope Speak Academy 66 class. He's the former super high school level farmer, and his character report says that despite his comical appearance, he's a man with a cute voice and a gentle heart. He's fond of using his own self-made sayings such as, up to three strawberry seeds, but no one has any idea what they mean. So um, my first impressions um, from this character is that he is just super duper likable. I think he'll be really funny and really entertaining, but I feel like a lot of the times the super duper likable characters either die or 
for evil, so I'm really sort of pessimistic about what's gonna happen to him. I hope he lives, but I don't know. I don't really think he'll end up being evil. I would be really shocked if he did, but um, I definitely do see him dying kind of early on because that just seems to be sort of a trend in like anime and JRPGs. I don't know why. But other than that, he is voiced by a female, which is sort of interesting. Not that that's like a first for Danganronpa or anything, but he has the same voice actress as Kagura from Gintama and Rise Kujikawa from Persona 4. The final character um, on this list is Great Gozu and his voice actor is Kinta Miyake and he's the head of the 12th branch and from Hope Speed Academy 69th class and is the former super high school level wrestler. His character report says that he used to work as a pro but after joining the Future Foundation began working as the head of the 12th branch. In contrast to the frightening cow mask, he has a gentle nature and a calm way of speaking. Normally very polite but terrifying when angry. At first glance, I really thought that he would be sort of like an antagonist, especially before we knew this was gonna be like another type of killing game, but um, now I do think he gives off more of like a Sakura vibe. And I think it's really cool because I really did love Sakura from the first game. I do wonder um, if the urban legend that has to do with the cowhead, which I mentioned in my speculation video, does relate to his character, if it's going to be mentioned at all, or if it's just sort of like a reference to it or something along those lines. But um, other than that, there's not really a whole lot to say. I am looking forward to this character though. Okay, so moving on, I'll be discussing the returning characters' character profiles. And these translations were also done by Jinjo Jess, and the formatting for it was done by Valwins. I will leave a link to her Tumblr in the description, like I mentioned before, and a link to Valwins' YouTube page in the description as well. And um, I'm going to first start off with Aoi Asahina, and her voice actress is Chiwa Saito. Her position is a member of the 13th branch, she is from Hope Speak Academy 78th class, and she is the former super high school level swimmer. The character notes say that she's a little bit prone to getting emotional, but believes in her friends and wants to protect people more than the average person. Originally, she wasn't going to be invited to Nagi's punishment hearing, but she came as a proxy. So, um, the one thing that's really interesting here is that Asahina is a member of the 13th branch, while all the other returning characters are a member of the 14th branch. And we also don't see who the leader of the 13th branch is as well, which is sort of strange. I thought that maybe Tagami was the leader of the 13th branch, but he actually says in another episode that he's a member of the 14th branch. So it's pretty strange, and um, just thought I'd point that out to you guys. Next is Kyoko Kirigiri. Her voice actress is Yoko Hukasa. Her position is the head of the 14th branch, and she is from Hope Street Academy 78th class and is the former super high school level detective. Her character notes say that she always coolly assesses the situation and finds the best policy for dealing with it. She used to not be concerned with others, but she has faith in her fellow survivors. Nothing too um, particular to say about this, but Kyoko is the head of the 14th branch, which is pretty awesome. I think she deserves it. She was definitely the most level-headed out of um, everybody from the first game. Next up on this list is Makoto Naegi. His voice actress is Megumi Ogata. His position is the member of the 14th branch. He's from Hope Speak Academy 78th class and is the Super High School Level Hope. His character notes say that he is called the Super High School Level Hope for destroying the super high school level despair, but he is being held and blamed for aiding the remnants of despair. So um, this pretty much of course confirms what we already know in the introduction that um, Nagi is of course being blamed for aiding the remnants of despair. Next on this list is Yasuhiro Hakakure. His voice actor is Masaya Matsukaze. His physician is the member of the 14th branch and he is from Host Peak Academy 78th class. He's the former super high school level fortune teller. The character notes say that he has a prediction success rate of 30%. Because he has a very offbeat and unique personality, how did he survive with Nagi and the others? He's tried to change his image by tying his hair up and wearing glasses, but he's still the same old coward. So strangely enough, there's actually been quite a few theories about Hagakure and what his role could be in this. Firstly, um, there is a theory that he could possibly be the traitor. I've seen theories about him being the mastermind. And I've also seen theories about him dying first, and so I'm not really too fond of the mastermind theory. I don't really think it would make sense for his character at all. Him being the traitor, I could see if he was sort of um, scared of the mastermind and what they would do to him. I could see him sort of cowardly deciding to help um, that person and being the traitor. As for the first person being killed off, I could also see that because then it would sort of start this series out with a bang, showing that not everyone is safe, that nobody is a safe, essentially, especially, you know, the characters from the first game. So I feel like that one would make the most sense to me. But um, a lot of people have theorized these three things based off of the broken crystal ball that appeared in the very first sort of image that we got 
as a teaser for the anime. So I would love to hear y'all's opinions on that. I think, uh, like I said before, the traitor and him dying first theory, I definitely see the mastermind one. <sighs> Not so much. I would be pretty disappointed if he was the mastermind, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Moving on, we have Monokuma. His voice actor is Tarako now, which I mentioned in um, my top executions list. And there's no position listed, and his notes say, a bear-shaped stuffed toy wrapped in mystery. His white half has a normal cute appearance, but his black half has a wicked expression. He's responsible for the future Foundation killing game, but his real intentions, goals, and who's controlling him are unknown. So I feel like um, still Monica would make the most sense to be the mastermind in this game, but I guess it just all depends on whether or not they're trying to have a surprising mastermind at the end of the game or not because of course in um, Super Dark Rapid 2 um, nobody was really essentially expecting Junko but it was sort of odd that it was her again so I don't know um, if they'll pull Junko out of a hat again or if they'll have Monica be the antagonist. I still lean towards Monica. I feel like it'll either be her or just like a new character that's popped up in this anime, but um, let me know what you guys think about that as well. I would love to hear your opinions. And last but not least is Monami on this list. Her voice actress is Takako Sasuga, and her position is also not listed. The notes say, a rabbit-shaped stuffed toy wrapped in mystery. She seems to view Monokuma, who has instigated the future Foundation killing game, as an enemy, and she opposes him. But she ends off her sentences with Baby Tall, like Dechu and Machu, so the jury is still out. So, um, the weird thing about Monami is the fact that it's Monami and not Usami, because originally, um, when I first saw Monami in, like, the Danganronpa 3 anime teasers and stuff, I, um, thought that it was, like, the Future Foundation had created her, and that made sense, and I feel like it would make sense if it was Usami, but the fact that it's Monami doesn't really make sense because it was sort of you know, um, Monokuma that turned Usami into Monami, so I wonder if the headmaster of this new game decided to create Monami for some reason or another, but, um, anyway, it's just something that's sort of interesting. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, um, these are just some of my thoughts and opinions, and sorry, I guess sort of, um, I changed my mind on whether or not I want to say Ultimate or Super High School Level or Mastermind or Headmaster. I think it's because I played um, the first game in Japanese and the second one in English, so I, so I get like a little, <laughs> not necessarily confused, but um, some of the translations, it's kind of hard to stick with Ultimate when they all say Super High School Level or when I'm reading stuff and it all says Headmaster instead of Mastermind. I hope it's not um, too like bothersome or anything for any of you guys, but um, thanks for being patient with this video. It's been um, a pretty crazy past couple of weeks for me, just uh, personally and school-wise, so I appreciate you guys being patient with me. I'm going to try and make this channel a little bit more routine again, and um, I'll let you guys know if there's any any other um, updates or things like that, and I will see you real soon. Subscribe to Weeby News for more hope-filled videos.